So you're, welcome. You gave me to, all. Huh? I've only given you host access. All right, we're going to start again. <laughs> Quiet on set. Hello and welcome to Solve Tank episode 12. This is the SAS Ops Life virtual event, Solve, Solve Tank style, where we get a SAS vendor on, we get them to do a demo, and then we ask them lots of questions and we give our feedback. Today, we are very happy to welcome Naira, Nira, Nira.com, a real-time access control system that provides visibility and management over who has access to company documents in Google Workspace. So we've got Marie and Hitton from uh, a Decibel uh, venture-backed uh, company. So thank you for joining us. Obviously, we had John from uh, Decibel Partners on last month to talk to us, and it's been great to, to have you guys join and show one of the products that, that their partnership has invested in. Happy to be here and uh, super, super happy to share. This is the first time we're actually sharing the interface to a broad group of people. Excellent, excellent. So I'll, I'll pass it over to you. You can, you can jump right in. We have our uh, collection of seasoned SaaS ops professionals. Uh, I think because it is a holiday week, weekend week here in North America, with it being 4th of July, we have a few less people than normal, but I know some of my colleagues will be joining uh, and taking a seat later on. So if you, do I need to give you access to present? Nope, all set. Yeah, yeah I'll, uh, over to you. You can uh, describe what your platform does and how you can solve our uh, uh, access uh, problems that we may have with company documents being in Google Workspace. Yeah, for sure. So um, we basically don't have any slides. So hopefully all of you, you know, anyone that likes slides, I'm sorry. Um, what we do on our demos uh, is we ask about three to five questions all about your Google Workspace, whether you have external sharing turned on, turns out most of you folks do, uh, most of the folks we talk to do. And if you do, then you have the problems that our product can solve. And so I'll just jump right into showing you the actual demo. Um, yeah, brilliant. And so in this specific scenario, I have basically uh, blurred out uh, all the PII, uh, so you know. But if you were a customer of ours, you wouldn't see the PII blurred out. So just to step back for a second, I'm Heaton Shah. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Nira. And Marie's on this call too. And we'll probably do a little bit of ping pong because um, when I demo, she usually has things that I missed uh, that she mentions uh, that are awesome. So what we've done is basically uh, today, we started with Google Workspace because that's um, kind of where we see kind of the majority of the problem right now. And we basically built a system to give you complete total visibility into every single document in your Google Workspace. And from there, um, we provide an ability for you to even manage the control of access, whether it's um, the link type, because uh, you know the different link types run rampant, uh, as well as who actually has access. Um, so yeah, that's what we've been building. We've, we've been around for a couple of years uh, and uh, we had built an enterprise search tool previously. And we decided that uh, this was a much more important problem for us to solve once we started talking to IT security and even legal folks. So yeah, um, the interface is really performant. Um, you, can in, you can use infinite scroll. We don't rely on pagination uh, to basically show you anything. Uh, then you can click on a single document and you can get all the relevant details uh, about it, including things like all the people that have access to it and what type of access they have. And I'm gonna run through kind of the interface a little bit, just like I, I just did. Uh, so you can kind of get a familiarity and then I'll go through some use cases. So we basically built out three different sections. This is the protect documents area. There's a people access area and there's a domain access area. And we hear that you folks love your audit logs. So we have also built out um, a full audit log as well. Uh, um, I'm sorry, Colin, we don't have an export to CSV on every screen yet. Considering what our product does, it is a little important for us not to do that yet because of the scale, but we are working on it, I promise. Um, so basically I'm going to run through a few use cases. First, what we did is we automatically classify documents into these, um, four or five different risk categories. So here you can see all documents with open links. So this is company open links and public open links. 
I'm going to jump to public open links and just show you a few things that um, folks are doing with our system. So they click here and they're like, oh no, there's this many documents with public links. Then they click here and say, I want to see only the ones that haven't been modified in over a year. So these are basically stale documents with public links. And then they want to be able to select all of them and change the link type with just a few clicks. Uh, so you can change the link type to restricted. You don't have to do any scripting or anything like that. Uh, we do have the confirmation because we also hear that you want to make sure you're double opting into this stuff, which makes perfect sense. Wouldn't want to just click some buttons and crazy things happen. And then we take care of um, all the API calls and all the things that need to happen to make the link type change. And then the data shows up in our audit log over here. And we've been playing around a lot with our interface to QA a bunch of stuff. So uh, there'll be a bunch of errors, but in general, we're trying to give you as much visibility as possible into the actions that we took and as granular as we can get. So this is an area we're actually improving constantly. Um, for example, we had a timestamp that used to say uh, 17 hours ago and folks told us, hey, you should put the real timestamp in here because that's what we need to be able to audit what happened and when it actually happened. Um, so going back to the documents area, there's a few other things that are pretty uh, useful here. Um, and the idea here is just to specifically provide you with the ability to drill down to groups of documents, individual documents, et cetera. So we can basically type in a keyword, uh, like let's say confidential. We can see that there's 86 documents that are confidential um, and see, do any of these have a public link? Usually there's none. So this is like a new one that was created 21 hours ago and has a public link and has confidential in the title. So I'm sure Marie is dying to get in the interface and fix this. Um, <laughs> we just found so something. <laughs> which, which you would be able yeah, to fix. So you know what? Yep. I'm just going to fix it right now so that I don't have to deal with it later. Because um, <laughs> yep. why not? Uh, uh, and then it changes and we go take care of that action. It'll show up in the audit log. But what I was going to show you, if this was at zero, is things like, you can see that a bunch of these have company kind of links. And if you could see the titles, one of these actually has, uh, I believe it's this one. So let's see what happens here. Yes, this is confidential employee salary. So this is the one we planted, it's fake, don't worry. But these are the kinds of things that we can help you discover really quickly when you need to discover them. So and I'll go over to the, yeah. I ahead. just wanted to mention one other use case we've seen customers do. They, when they get into this interface, they hone in on a particular executive whether it's their CEO or their head of finance um, or their COO, they type in that person's name, either in the owner or people filter, and then they'll start playing around like, okay, did the, does that person have any public links? Okay, that's probably a bad thing. Let's change all of those or at least talk to them or talk to legal. Does that person have any stale documents with external folks that are on them? Um, does that person have any other kind of issues? So they'll search for like confidential, for example, and look at uh, company links with that. So there's a lot of stuff that folks are doing to really um, make sure that all the executives documents are secure as well. So these are Marie's documents and it looks like she has four that are shared outside the company and have the title confidential in them. So this is something where like, she'd probably wanna go do something about that. I'm not gonna touch these though in this case. Uh, that's Marie's problem at this point. Um, let me show you the people access area. So here we've actually sh are showing every single person that has access to company documents. One of the other kind of add-ons that we have is we're able to show you folks who are, um, who have who, any document that's shared with the company as well. So all those people are included here. Um, one of the things that our customers do within two minutes of using the interface is get to this area. So this, is, this shows you all the people, um, all the personal accounts that have access which obviously is a big uh, risk in so many different cases. And you can quickly check, like if you didn't know, for example, Marie, I think this is her right here. Um, if she, you know, is she an employee or not? You can do a quick check there and it turns out that she is in this case, um, if you were able to see that. And then what you would wanna do is basically take that and remove all the access from here. So yes, I picked the proper account. That's her Gmail in case anyone wants to bug her later. Um, but you can then click here and we obviously take care of removing her from all those 443 items. Um, yeah, and the, if, yeah go ahead. I just wanted to go a bit more in this section. So, um, you know, customers are finding that there are kind of three categories typically of personal accounts. Actually, I should say four. Um, the first is former employees. The second is uh, existing employees that have either accidentally or unfortunately maliciously sometimes shared things with their personal accounts. There are also contractors that, you know, just use personal emails and that might not be um, 
kind of what companies want. And then the last category that folks have seen and been very surprised by is actually um, like agencies or uh, let's say audit firms, companies that they're working with that somehow employees are accidentally or again, maliciously using their personal accounts. So all that stuff gets shown here. Typically the numbers are more in the many thousands, um, like tens of thousands and more. Uh, and you know, people don't usually see this any other way. And again, we're showing both documents that those personal accounts own and share. And of course, you folks know all the issues there. Like if somebody, an employee owns a bunch of documents and they leave the company, those documents are essentially out of sight now. Um, they could have public links on them. They could be copied. They could be deleted. Uh, so there's a lot of IP that ends up sitting there that we're kind of surfacing for folks. Yeah, and you can do the whole system is connected. So you can click up here on this personal account and it gets automatically filtered into the documents area and then kind of do the assessments that you need to do. Um, so we make it really easy to do that. For example, does this person actually have anything with the public link? Yeah, there's a bunch of them here. Uh, another one would be, um, has this person, uh, how, many, how many of the things does this person own or are there anything that's kind of shared outside the company um, with even this personal account? So you can do a lot of kind of investigative work and that's what we realize that you folks need when you need it. Uh, so that's why we started here with this complete visibility and the ability to investigate everything. Then we have domain access, which is a really, really fun one too, because here you can see all the domains that have access. So in this case, um, there's a dev shop that we work with and uh, a couple of years ago. And when you click here, you can see that 68 people have access. Well, in this specific case, um, we only work with five or six people there. And what it turns out as is this all account right here um, which I know because <laughs> when it's not blurred, you can see it right here. We work with a firm called Andela. I have no problem sharing that uh, back in the day. And so you could see that the all at Andela account has access to a document and you probably want to make sure that that's taken care of. So one other thing that we've seen folks do and find valuable is they can click up here and then we're filtering by that domain now. And so here you can quickly see that there's these 14 documents that are shared with this domain. In this case, actually, a lot of them are even owned by them. Uh, so you can then check and see, do any of these have public links? And if they end up having public links and you believe that's true, then you're probably going to want to reach out to that firm uh, and outside party and figure out like how to lock this down. So we give you the visibility to do that. Hey, Heaton. Right, ahead, um, okay. There's some uh, great discussion happening in the chat. So I just wanted you to cover a few things people are asking about. Well, let's, I think let's. Really, let's uh, wait. Uh, okay. yeah, let's let's say that. Unfortunately, these okay. guys love to talk in between class. Ah, if this cool. was a classroom, they would be throwing paper airplanes and rolled up pieces of paper at each other. Uh, they love to talk behind the scenes. So okay. try and ignore so, them. So it's, I will it's ignore how them. they operate. So I do want to add one look, thing. Or have well, there's, one there's thing. a fun, fun, fun story first, and then you can add your thing. Yeah, so yeah. I'm the one that's the troublemaker in class. I would cheat. I would skip class. I would do all those things. And Marie's the exact opposite. That's why she's I sat in the front in row. So yes. That I'd share that context. So <laughs> totally get it. I've been ignoring the chats because I figured the same thing. Go ahead, Marie. Good job. Uh, yeah. So I wanted you to just talk a bit about um, the kind of information we're pulling in and not pulling in just so that folks have an understanding from yeah, the security standpoint. Absolutely. And also you could just mention our SOC 2 and all that good stuff as yeah, well. For sure, you can too, but I'll, I'll go for it. Um, so, we, and, and, uh, so, so we basically focused in on, once we started talking to folks and understanding this need, we focused in on not analyzing anything in the documents and also not storing the documents on our end in any way, shape or form. We are very focused on access control and the metadata and are getting better and better at organizing it, transforming it, making sure it's accurate. Um, we've built what eventually we'll end up calling a real-time engine where we're able to monitor all instances of these documents. So for example, companies that have tens of millions of documents in this interface, it works just as fast. And we're monitoring hundreds of millions of instances of these documents in real time and keeping everything up to date. Because as you folks know, access can change anytime. And that's why the category we're building out is actually, we're calling it real-time access control. Um, there's a bunch of other things we're building. Uh, this is shipped here. It's actually a dashboard. Um, no one's seen it before. So I'm just gonna show you the mock-up because if I show you it right now, Marie's probably gonna get really upset, the working version. So this is the mock-up of it. We're building out a security feed that will surface the kind of insights that um, you're looking for when it comes to um, the, you know, types of things we were digging into. We know that we built this and you have to spend a lot of time in it. 
uh, to find things. So we've taken the time we've spent with customers to understand what kind of things are they digging into and then creating automated checks in the security feed. And they were really pumped about the watch feed as well. The watch feed and the idea of that, which is an upcoming feature, is to be able to watch specific items when you need to, whether it's things that have confidential in the title, because that's how you're tagging things, or um, anything like that, such as like financial documents for companies that are public that need to kind of monitor those. Um, so yeah, those are a bunch of the kind of things uh, of the product today. We have a pretty aggressive roadmap in a whole bunch of areas. And depending on your questions, I can dive into them. Obviously, this is going to go beyond just Google. Um, we are going to also do a whole bunch of different automation around this stuff. And um, in terms of our security uh, posture and all that stuff, we have our SOC 2 type 2. We're going after our ISO. We're in a constant observation period now. And um, we, take, we consider ourselves a security company period. Um, so, and Marie owns all of that. So I'm sure she'll have more to share about that as well. Yeah, the person that likes to sit in the front row is a good person to own <laughs> security, privacy yes, and all those things. Me. Yes. Um, I also wanted to just add a couple things. Um, so Heaton in the beginning talked about how we provide companies with full and complete visibility. Oftentimes folks don't ever have that kind of visibility and they don't realize it until they get into our tool. Um, so oftentimes like people can't see shared drives if they're using other tools. So we actually did a lot of work to get shared drives in. Um, we also have, he mentioned, externally owned documents as well. So oftentimes customers will think they have a certain number of documents, but once they get into our tool, they realize they have a lot more documents. And the other thing I wanted to mention too is the experience that our customers have. They typically kind of go in and get a view of the current state. They see, oh gosh, we have all these issues we didn't know about. You know, we want to know about them, obviously, and remediate them. Then they start to actually change uh, and control that access using the actions that we have. And then they're starting to kind of rethink their policies because oftentimes the policies either haven't been working or they're not actually based on the real problems the company has because they didn't have full visibility. And so that's kind of the, the work that we're helping customers with now is really what are the policies and then how do we help them implement them? Yep, um, that's our demo. Uh, I've been looking through the chat a little bit. Lots of great questions. Hopefully we answered some of them, but. The system scales, it was built to scale. Um, I myself have built multiple SaaS businesses since 2003 and uh, the head of engineering here, I've worked with him for 10 years and he has a business intelligence background. So um, we're not messing around here in terms of scale. We're, we're, we're already handling it and it's been a lot of fun. Great, yeah, before we get into the questions, and I know in the in the chat behind the scenes, there's been a, a lot of good ones. And they, and they sort of use that to stage their questions and, and sort of bookmark and, and re remind themselves what they want to ask. Would you be able to give a bit of background of, of who you are, experiences, where you've come from? Yeah, um, Marie, you want to go first? Yeah, I absolutely. Mine, so yeah, go ahead. yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm the COO at uh, Nira, and we actually used to be called FYI. So we... Um, Kind of rebranded our name um, and also like Keaton said we used to do enterprise search so we moved into uh, access control after that and my background is actually quite different uh, especially from Heaton's uh, I have a master's in English literature which uh, you would think I don't use but actually I do use it quite a bit for communication um, and then I was a consultant for quite some time and also worked at uh, a large alcohol conglomerate in the uh, strategy innovation, which is essentially product um, and mergers and acquisitions areas. And then about five years ago, five and a half years ago, met Heaton and started working with him. We built a couple of products that uh, I think eventually pivoted into what became FYI. And now um, we've been focused on Nira for about the last year, but we've been working on um, this problem and just documents in general for about the last three. And yeah, I live in San Francisco also, but I'm an East Coast person originally. Yeah, and in my case, I've been in tech since 2003 and built multiple companies. One of my companies is called Crazy Egg, um, and it's an independent business. Uh, my wife runs it. It's under 20 people, and it's a self-service software business. And um, uh, after that, I built a company called Kissmetrics that we had it just a fun ride on. We uh, kind of innovated in the area of analytics for quite some time. Uh, and then uh, once, and then I took a little hiatus and ended up investing or advising about 200 companies 
uh, before it was cool to invest in all these companies uh, and uh, kind of stopped and slowed down as we kind of ramped up uh, Nira. And uh, yeah, uh, I think one, one kind of highlight uh, on our end uh, with Marie and I, we, we didn't come from this industry. We don't know. We didn't know you folks until like 18 months ago or enough about you folks. We just want to build the best possible product in the market to solve the problems you have. And that's it. That's all we care about. Um, and that's what we're hyper-focused on. And in terms of like the snappy UI and all that, it's a necessary thing. So we're going to make sure that our UI is always snappy, no matter how many documents you have or items actually as we scale. Excellent. Great. Well, thank you for the, the demo and the history of, of who you guys are and a bit of background. I know these guys have questions. Uh, they might even ask you to dive back into the UI to, to yeah. explain something. Who wants to raise their hand first or unmute themselves? I see, uh, yeah, I see Rose is unmuted. She's got all of her hands up. Um, hang on. Let me find my question back in the chat real quick because I want to say it fairly similarly. So I really am very curious about the snappy UI because I think one of the problems, especially with Drive in particular, is that um, scaling is a massive problem in the UI. Um, and so we end up with a lot of pagination and then sometimes, you know, there's issues with that. Like when we're talking in the order of millions of files here, I'm just wondering like what, how are you managing to keep that and preserve that, that experience? There's, there's, it, it's hard. And there's, there's, <laughs> and, 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 and the reason, the reason it's hard is not just technical, it's also UI. So Marie and I are constantly not fighting, but battling engineering for, hey, this is important to the customer. And then engineering goes, but we can't do it like that. So then we go, well, what's the trade-off? So there's a number of trade-offs that are transparent to our customers because we know what's important to them that we have made. And those trade-offs like are just user experience trade-offs and not engineering trade-offs. And we try to push our engineering team to go make it happen. So as I said, like, we just care about solving this problem the best way possible. We know how ineffective a uh, pagination is and also how it really gets messed up as things get updated um, and then you don't know where you are. So these are just little things that we found that are really important to our customers. And then it causes them to be like, oh, I don't want to use any other product after this because this is snappy like this. So I, I wish I had a better answer, but the person that would give you the better answer is our head of engineering, but like he has zero time to talk to anybody, even us about anything these days. Um, so that's, that's, that's a real answer. At the end of the day, we're using React on the front end to have basically got a, a customized the way we do the tables. We just got adjustable columns and stuff in. So it gets up, it gets really deep into the weeds of like how to make the browser do what you want it to do. Um, and we are just continuously going to expand this and make it so that some of the capabilities we had to trade off that we're going to put back in once we can have one engineer spend four weeks on some react like nitty gritty thing uh, to make the, whether it's the caching or whatever work. By the way, today there's no caching going on. And because what we believe is- There you go, Dominic. There's the answer to your question. <laughs> if, we're cache, if, if we are caching any data in here, that means that you're not looking at a accurate view. Right. That's not okay. It's not real time right. updating if it's caching. Exactly, yeah, so. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I think a lot of the other services out there do use a sync, don't they? And it's always a struggle to get accurate. And they all have different visibility. sync times, right? And some yeah, of them, a... some of them update purely on events, and some of them will update on the sync and on the <laughs> events, or just on the sync. And like, yeah. I built an analytics company before that got to tens and tens of billions of data points. Steve built it with me. Um, it's it's as close it's actually as close to real time as you can get we just don't update the interface in real time because that would just be not worth it um, but when you reload it does show you the latest data up to the last 10 seconds and we're constantly working on our real-time engine to make sure that that stays as fresh as possible in fact we have a big 10-week project to create the second version of our real-time engine that's going to be even faster one other issue that i just want to mention that might trigger you folks in good ways or bad ways but like we have experienced this idea that like, you know, ingesting millions and millions of these documents and the metadata on them is supposed to take weeks and weeks. We've got our process down where no matter how many you have, it'll be done within 48 hours. And that's with our current system. Our, our, the system that we're gonna build in the next 10 weeks is gonna pull in a lot more data to, to be honest. 
and it's going to do it faster and more consistently. So we, we think we can get that time down to hours, even if you have like tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of documents. What we're trying to do is make it so that the limits are Google's limits, not our system's limits. And we see a lot of vendors not thinking that way. And when we thought of like what we were doing, we realized that like that ingestion time, even the initial ingestion time, increases the, the, or decreases the time to value for you folks and any, any, anybody that onboards with us. And, you know, just, it's just about providing great experiences to customers and you folks are all our customers. That sounds expensive. <laughs> Having built an analytics system, um, we, we are very high, like we are very highly tuned. In fact, like the way we think about some of those areas is when we hired our DevOps engineer who now does a lot more at the company, the goal was, Hey, come in, and, and make your salary up within a month, right? So it, for us, it's just a lot of those kind of principles as we bring people on to make sure that costs are manageable. At the same time, you know, you folks know Decibel are investors in the company. So they'll just keep giving us money in case this stuff gets costly because <laughs> apparently the problems we're solving are really valuable. <laughs> Sounds fair. Yeah. It's a trade-off, right? It's a deal. That's, that's the deal we have. <laughs> Right. Yes, but I, I, I think you know, it goes down to having that good architect, architecture to start with, um, you know, and then obviously it is, has been interesting and exciting to hear that you've got the plan to add in other applications and other data sources and not just being Google Workspace only. Uh, any other questions from people? Anyone want to unmute? I know Steve had, a, had posted a question in chat. Yeah, I just was wondering how it compares, how would you say it compares with, you know, GAT as a competitor type thing? I, I would actually turn it back on you folks. Now that you've seen it, I would ask, what do you folks think? I'm not going to give the best answer to that compared to people that regularly use GAT and, and GAM and all those things. I mean, we, we're in all the groups. We play with all those tools. Our engineers are playing with them. In fact, we're entertaining some really awesome things where we can either replace it for you in different ways, but more familiar with command line and things like that. But that's like a, a further ways out. So I'd, I'd put it back on you and say like, you know, what are the problems that it solves versus what we solve and what's kind of the diff? I think we're just looking to replace any, any kind of scripting and command line tooling as much as makes sense. Cause we know some folks love their command line tooling and we are thinking about how we can do some awesome things with command line that you can't do today. But that again is a ways out, but it's just something that I'm really excited about exploring. I, I think for these guys, the love of GAM and command lining comes also with uh, the, uh, the, the, the zero budget that is generally required to, to utilize those tools. Um, for, which for, me, it, for, for me, it's actually the flexibility uh, yeah. and, and the, the speed to solution rather than clicking to stuff. Even if it's right now, if I can get that time down of, of that solution from after I wrote my command by utilizing your infrastructure rather than Google directly, that would be awesome. Anything else, I don't really care if I use GAM or your command line too, but just, yeah, the faster the better. <laughs> and also for, for delegating to people that don't necessarily have those skills. Right. That's, I think that's one of the, the current flaws in GAM, and we've talked about it a number of times in our community, is that those command line tools are really, really great. And it is also really incredibly difficult to set them up in a way that puts bumpers on for people who are learning or people who just need to get their jobs done, right? But GAM is the only option in their organization, so. We, we, we have some ideas. Yeah. So. Um, I had a question, which is, you know, I don't know, maybe really, really far in the future. But um, a, a lot of these platforms start as either Google managers or Microsoft managers, right? Um, and then the more people get into them, the more there, there are infrastructure matures, the more that we also want to apply similar controls to um, the rest of our stack. So I, where do you see this going? Everywhere. Um, we're taking requests. We have, uh, okay. we, we are gonna, we're gonna integrate with everything that matters to you folks over time. We have, um, we don't also, something that Marie's probably gonna hate that I'm gonna say right now is um, we're gonna go beyond okay. documents. We think documents are like mm -hmm. interesting and great, but you have, you have this real-time access control problem across almost every tool that allows external sharing, internal sharing in real time and these changes happening. Um, 
again, like built an analytics company before, worked with our head of engineering for 10 years. We're gonna have worked together for five or six here. Um, we just wanna solve the problem. And if the problem extends beyond Google, great. We're gonna have Microsoft at some point, which is like another whole ecosystem. Although some, <laughs> yeah. of, it, some, of, some of it's being combined. Uh, and then we've got like a pretty aggressive roadmap, not just for document tools, because we're hearing that a lot of folks are consolidating their document tools, but for any other tool where you think sharing is happening, um, our only limitation is going to end up being, and we even have some tricks for this, but our biggest limitation is going to be, does that tool provide the proper APIs to let us do yeah. a good enough experience for you folks without like having inconsistencies? Because that's a big, honest, big problem. That being said, some of the tools we've been looking at are the most popular ones you folks use. And in terms of far in the future, we're hiring engineers as fast as we can. <laughs> and, and, and we're raising as much money as we can as fast as we can too. And so the, the, the game for us here is just engineers. It's not like how fast can we get to right. those integrations? We wanna get to them as fast as possible. And we're hearing the need is beyond just document tools. Yeah. Have you found okay, any ways to... Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Have you found any ways to identify members of the um, auto-generated emails that are part of uh, chat rooms that apply permissions to files? We are noticing those auto-generated emails in our interface. So the starting point was, can we find them? And the answer is yes. Have we done anything special about them yet? No. Uh, but those are just things like filters and things like that. But there are those cases. There's also the cases of groups. So there's a bunch of stuff, even in Google itself, that we're going to be moving moving forward on really fast. Um, one of them is, is that we haven't seen a customer that has that running rampant enough yet that wants it solved. But once we do, we will just be adding the proper filters and the views. So all we, again, we just want to hear about your problems, all of them, and your most painful ones and the ones that you think are insane to solve, because those are the ones that get us most excited. This one what is your... insane. <laughs> Go ahead. What do, what's your priority on supporting fairly new um, parts of drive? So for instance, like drive labeling, um, that's it, the it, only way I can get this Friday. Yeah, um, <laughs> uh, the, the inside baseball on our end is basically um, our, our, our new engine is gonna be set up to be able to bring those things in much easier on our end, technically. Um, so that's what we're setting up for. But the, the absolute truth is we can only do what Google's APIs let us do, Yeah. right? So we're just waiting for them to provide some of these things in the API in a, in a reliable enough or robust way. Um, you know, we have very extensive shared drive support. We haven't seen anybody else have extensive shared drive support. And we know the reasons why, because some of the APIs are very just inadequate in that area. But we have found not even tricks, just reliable ways to get to it because Again, we'll just have an engineer poke at it for a month if we have to. We don't care uh, because these things are important to solve. So um, looking at labels, looking at some of those things. Also, if you think about the Microsoft ecosystem, they've already got a bunch of this stuff in the APIs and things like that. So we're already thinking through making sure we can have parity. And we think that there are a few of these features that because of all of you folks putting pressure on Google in a number of ways, um, Google is starting to like wake up to some of that and starting to add some of the functionality. So I guess in short, we're just excited about it and are set up to like start adding these things as soon as possible. Awesome. So uh, on the EDU question that I just posted in chat, um, because if you start selling into EDU or if you already do it um, in a big way, uh, those groups also show up in Classroom. Um, and so there, that there may or may not be a easy, <laughs> a, a easy need for for a big ed, education organization to get this thing with those weird groups solved in any way possible. Yeah, we 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 have a little bit of an advantage at our company because we built an enterprise search tool and integrated with twenty four different tools, and we had EDUs signing up, and so we had to understand kind of how to deal with some of those things, not all of them, but some of them. Uh, and so we found a bunch of ways to deal with all that. For us, it's just simply like bring a customer on, a set of customers on, hear what their problems are and make sure as a business, we're set up to iterate really fast because that's all we can really do when we hear all these things because these are very complex problems, right? And we do want to solve them. So we're just set up to solve them by just moving fast on those things. We ship every day. Uh, we've had improvements even in the last few days that our customers have seen. Uh, probably by surprise, but you know we do our best to keep it good in the UI, so you're not like surprised and don't know what to do. 
Are you thinking <clears throat> about any sort of auto remediation um, use case being uh, used to work a place where we'd have a lot of customer documents? It was a real estate company, so a, a lot of that sort of stuff. So if something was auto detecting PII and it got shared with the to the world fully public link, that was a no go, and it instantly got changed from there. Is there anything you're looking at, kind of going into that space? Yeah. So the short the short answer is yes. Uh, the longer answer is, when we looked in the market and looked at that kind of need, what we realized is that the solutions are inadequate if they don't have the complete visibility and the accuracy of the data. And so we focused on that as phase one. So 1.0 is basically everything we showed you except the security feed. 2.0 is the security feed, the watch feed, and the magic word automation and our first shots at it. If you think about it from just a logical standpoint, people come use our product and want to clean a bunch of stuff up. Then all that stuff that they cleaned up leads to them, even their legal teams and their security teams and IT, of course, thinking about policies, policies that they've never thought about before because our tool surfaced some of these problems. And so the natural extension, and again, we're just going where the wind blows, right? Which is where our customers want us to go, which is get into, oh, now you helped us fix these problems. Can you help, like you've already helped us fix these problems, great. Now can you help us make sure these problems never happen again? So that's the way we think about automation. It's like these problems are not happening again, right? And so we're just picking those off. And those are, those are like, literally by August, we'll have our first pass at automation and then we'll just keep iterating from there. Excellent. Any other last minute questions before we go to our round robin of asking our uh, our opinions? I will I will note, Rose, that we don't have to ask that awkward question of how much does the product cost because these guys do have the prices on their website on the frequently asked uh -huh. question. So there uh -huh. it is. That's what, always one of the group's bugbears when when those prices uh, aren't visible, and it's always call for a best quote. We, oh my gosh. We, we want you folks to have a great experience. And that requires us to be very direct on our website and not full of crud. I'm really even afraid of calling anything a real time engine, but certain customers that are larger like to know they can't build this at a hackathon. Um, so, yeah, thanks for sharing that, Colin. <laughs> no, any, any last I guess minute I have, question? I have, yeah. yeah, I have I have one last question about pricing because you do put pricing on your website. However, um, I work for a nonprofit. Obviously, we deal a lot with EDUs in the Google Workspace area. Um, do you guys have discounts for EDU and nonprofit? Um, we, yeah. Our, our goal is to have as many people as possible solve these problems, as many companies as possible. If you come to us and say you have an issue with our pricing, we will work with you to figure it out. We don't have a sales team. It's my co-founder and I selling right now, and we're learning. So our goal is to actually learn where the price point needs to be for different segments of the market. Our aspiration is to get to the price point that we have on the website. And we've been working with customers to figure this out. We, we have the advantage of being early and not having growth targets in our business today. And when we do have them, we're gonna make sure it's predictable. The only way we can do that is by offering the right plan to the right person at the right time. So if you come to us, Rose, and say, hey, this is a ridiculous price point, we would come back to you and say, okay, what do you wanna pay? Right. And there's a number of things we've discovered yeah. already. Also, this is something where we don't want to just work with like companies with just like, you know, 500 or more employees. We want to work with the smallest companies as well. Uh, and so that means that we have to be approachable for that. Um, yeah, Gray just made the distinction in chat that pricing is based on the number of employees and not the number of Google accounts. Yes. So I think that's a useful distinction for the recording. <laughs> How does that yes, work it, on your end? Um, we are Trust figuring. Her. We are figuring that out, but you can imagine with like a directory integration, we'll be able to know exactly how many employees you have. So it's not as hard as you might think. And we like to automate those things so that it's no trouble for everybody. Most importantly though, as a customer, you want predictability on pricing. If we made it on account, we know there's not a lot of predictability there because we don't want to be yet another layer where you're worried about how much is it's going to cost because you're already worried about that with Google. But your number of employees, you tend to have good planning around that. And yeah, there is a level of trust. We want you to trust us, but we want to trust you too. So um, yeah, we just consider that not, not a big risk on our end. But yeah, it is, it is how we charge. Yeah, and for a lot of organizations, they will have a, a cost, cost per employee so that recruitment and finance 
operations know when they're when they're planning they know what all of the individual license costs are for an, an actual employee but if you're in a business and you're creating service accounts or anything else and you you're working with a provider that does a full directory sync and then charges you based on those directory licenses that can become can become a bit of a problem and certainly for levers as well if you've got to retain somebody's account but then still have to have them licensed um, that could be a problem so uh, we got seven minutes ish 12 10 minutes left uh, for until the top of the hour let's go around and give some people's get some people's opinions I'm going to go for Dominic first what are your thoughts I am super excited on that speed and um, there is just like not even Google Drive seems to be able to handle it this fast. <laughs> I mean, I've just scrolled through Google one Drive of our can biggest definitely longest... not handle it that fast. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've just scrolled through one of our big one shared drives that is unorganized and just like, yeah, <laughs> you're faster. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's that the speed is exciting, and that makes uh, just that alone makes me want to try it. I do am um, curious on your future channel strategy um, because I am uh, working with a partner. Well, I, I own a partner. <laughs> so that, that is something that we were like, definitely want to look at uh, over time. So yeah, awesome. Yes, yes. Dominic's disclaimer, he is a reseller, a Google Workspace reseller and resells some other programs. And, and for your clients, this probably would be something that you might would be interested in offering. Dominic. Yeah, sorry, I need to do, <laughs> unmute myself again. Yes, this is definitely something that comes up as a question anyway. So that's why you build it. That's why that's why we have some weird as long as cam scripts that yeah. take days to run on uh, 67 gigabytes of RAM <laughs> machines. Yeah. And yeah, it's okay. Sometimes Great, it man. could just be faster. Yeah. Thank you. Randy. Let me jump to you. I like it. I'm very interested. I like the, the path they look to be going on, um, taking the feedback seri very seriously from customers, and not just a, you know, well, we'll see what comes up the most, just simply at that. And just that's pretty blanket. As much as it seems inclusive, it's pretty blanket. Uh, so I like the, the attitude for the progression of the product. Um, and yeah, I'm going to have to schedule a meeting and chat with them so excellent excellent chris tucker yeah so i i unfortunately came in a little bit late so i missed most of the demo uh but i did get to see that speed which was kind of awesome and, and kind of the checkbox things which also look great so i'm looking forward to going back and watching the demo uh after this and then um you know probably investigate a little further because it's definitely some things that that we see that i don't see elsewhere um and that's that's promising good rose Layden. Um, yeah, so, I mean, to be fair, we've seen a lot of these Google managers on this program in particular, because many of us are Google users. Um, I am really, really impressed by the UI on here. Um, I didn't think it was that big of a deal, but when you have those check boxes where you can just like change the view for like publicly shared, I was like, So like, it, it's such a simple thing. And I, but I really, what I, what I appreciate about that, right. Is that, that you guys thought about that, right. You thought about what is the, the most straightforward and simple way to get to this thing that our customers want to see. And, and that's valuable. Um, yeah. I mean, incredibly promising, incredibly promising. I think, you know, for more mature organizations, they're, Clearly, you know, they're going to want to wait and see how you guys evolve over time. Um, but yeah, wow. Yeah, definitely, definitely a good start out of the gate. Excellent. Let's move over to Steve. Uh, yeah, I'm excited to try it out and see um, kind of how it works. And I think like a few people have said, you know, the speed in which it is functioning is a is definitely a very promising feature given uh, you know a lot of larger customers that uh, you know or a lot of customers that have a lot of files um, there's definitely been 
uh, a lot of projects that I've been involved in before that have like uh, I think someone said it takes days or a large servers to run some commands on to do permission changes. So yeah, great, uh, Alex. Yeah, uh, just to repeat everything. I'm, I'm impressed by the the UI. Looks great. Uh, snappy and intuitive. Very much more useful than other UIs we've seen. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see what you guys develop around automation and policy. That's that's going to be the that's what would would really entice me as far as purchasing it. Cool. And then Brian. Yeah, I think I spoke with uh, both of you uh, sometime in November last year. So I'm really impressed with how much progress you've made on the tool. And yeah, so like as much as I like using the native Google tools, uh, but reporting on DLP violation within Google, within Google admin console itself leaves much to be desired. And there's still no automation in terms of what you can do. So if you uh, can add that automation feature when upcoming uh, product releases, uh, I think that's something that I'll be very much looking forward to. Great. Yes. And I'll, I'll give my thoughts, obviously, as a disclaimer, we, we have been involved in the alpha and the beta. Um, and I can tell you that uh, the speed of the interface uh, is to be believed because we do have quite a few documents. Um, and it is, it is very interesting what you can dig out uh, and what you can find. And I think, you know, as Rosa said and others, that it, it's obviously we can see that there's a lot of thought has gone into the platform. Um, and I do very much look forward to, to uh, the ability to manage other applications in it. Um, and then uh, automation, because we love automated things. Um, that is the, the name to the game in, in SASOPS. SASOPS is our life. This is a virtual event. This is Solve, Solve Tank. Thank you very much to Maria and Hidden for, for sharing us the, the platform. Any, any final thoughts, messages, how they can contact you, what, they, what people should do if they want to find out more information, do a trial? Yeah, the, the, the quickest way is just go to our website, request a demo. If you like email and you want to email either of us or both of us, I'm just putting it in there. Um, just a couple quick things on what folks said. Um, we're already at scale. We have companies with thousands and thousands and thousands of employees and many more in the pipeline that are really large. Um, I hear everyone about automation. What we're finding is that the, these problems are not visible to companies. So anyone that actually wants to find these problems now, like you should come on now. Like I'm just being real. Like people are finding some really ridiculously bad uh, risky things. Um, Colin's nodding his head, so I'm not going to say any more about that, but, um, and we're just happy to help in literally every call. Uh, I'll say one last thing, like we mean it when we're customer centric or we're, as we scale, we're going to make sure that the folks we hire think like Marie and I do. We have like thousands and thousands of pages of raw notes from every customer interaction. So then when we hear stuff, we just go look back and can pull it out and then build the right thing really quickly as a result. So we take this customer stuff really seriously. That's the only way we know how to build product. Uh, it's all about you folks. It's not about us and even like our engineers. It's about how, how the heck do we solve these problems? Because clearly they exist. That's they they certainly do. They certainly do. Well, uh, thanks again. Thank you everybody for, for joining. We will end it here. And uh, we will uh, let you know what's coming up for Solve and Solve Tank. Uh, you can check us out on sasops.live website and find a lot of us on the Better IT Slack channel at the sasops.community pages. Thank you very much.